Hello, this is Mark LaRochelle from Productive Computing University. Thanks for joining us on this video. We wanted to provide a brief example video from an actual lesson in the course called Claris FileMaker Pro Beginner. This particular course focuses on training you, the up and coming developer, or even the experienced developer on the Claris platform. In this situation, we're working with FileMaker Pro, also known as Claris Pro. Now this lesson features working with list views and sample data. So we hope you enjoy this particular lesson. And if you're interested in more, there's other free lessons here on YouTube, as well as the full course at ProductiveComputingUniversity.com. Again, the name of that course is Claris FileMaker Pro Beginner. Now on to the lesson. In this lesson, we talk about building a contacts list. We'll also be importing sample data. Okay, back to our PCU gaming company file. And we'll open this up. This is where we left it last, where we had a data entry layout. We did that across two sessions, part one and part two. Now what we'd like to do is present this on a list. Before we do that though, let's add some more records to this. In fact, I'll go ahead and get some sample data where we can bring in some company names and some addresses and individuals. So if you do a quick search on the internet, you will likely find this link. If you look for free sample data, the link I'm using here is from a site called briandunning.com. I'll click on that and that will give you some options to do both paid and free sample data. What I like to do is use the US 500 records. Just go ahead and download that now. This data is particularly useful and this person is a FileMaker developer as well. And this resource has been with us for years and years and years. This is truly fake data. It's not actual customers or businesses, but it certainly looks real when you play with it. So let me close that browser now. And we're going to use a feature called File Import Records. We're going to import records from a file, the one we just downloaded, in fact. So I'll click File here. And let me locate that in my Downloads folder. I have something here called US500.csv. That's the one we just downloaded. So I'll click Open now. And then up comes a specify import order dialog box. The first thing it asks us for is add source data from selected fields as new records in the target table. That's exactly what we want. You'll see a picture here for each of those. I can add records, update to existing records, or replace any records that I have in the found set with incoming data. In this case, we want to add new records. So that's good there. Now I'll click off that window and we see quite a few things on this particular screen. So first, as we look at this dialog, we have the source, which is the file that we just downloaded, and our target. Here we can pick whatever table we want. Since we only have the contacts table now, we'll import that into contacts. Then over here, it shows us the different records. This is a selector where you can select use as field names or the data. If this was data versus field names, then you'd want to select that but this first record is in fact used as field names. So this is the field names in that first record of that sample. And then every record after that is the data itself. And that's what you're gonna have most of the time when you're working with exported files in CSV format like this. But here's all our sample data as we manually go through this and look at that. Now over here we can map it. So we can map the source fields to the target fields. And we'll just start doing that. So first name, we do want to import first name and we want to import that to first name. So we'll select that with the mouse. The last name will import into last name. So you can also use this filter here. There we go. First, first, last, last, company. We actually have a company there. So let me do that. Company name. Then we have the address, which could be mapped to our street. There we go. City, we have a city, so we'll map that. Country, we don't have. State, we do have. So let's import that field and then pick state. Zip, we do have. So let's import the zip code. Phone 1 and 2. Well, we don't have phone 1 and 2, but we can use the company phone for phone 1. So we'll do company phone there. And then phone 2, we'll import that. And we'll put that for individual phone. Here we go, individual phone, company, individual. Email, we do have one of those, so we'll import that and email, like so. And then website, well, we have one of those too. It's like the sample data was made for us. The only thing we don't have is country at the moment. So let's go ahead and add our country field. I'll select this and say import. 
Now, obviously, we didn't create country ahead of time, so we can use this icon here to quickly jump into our Manage Database, and we'll make sure that we're on the Fields area. Then we'll add a new field here called Country. Just make sure you've got the Fields area selected. Country, Create. There's our country as a text field. I'll push OK. And now we can click here again, and then select Country. And now all of our data is represented. And we can leave all these other options their default values. I'll click Import. And just like that, we have 500 records in our system. Actually, we have 501 because we had a record from before. If I click this circle icon, it'll flip to, to the first one here. And if I go under Records and show all records, all 501 are in the found set starting with the first one that we manually entered from a previous lesson, and then here's all our sample data. So now that's going to give us something to work with here in this file as we move it along and add to it. But let's create a list view now. So I'm going to go into Layout Mode, Command-L, go to Layouts and say New Layout Report. We want this to work with the computer, so I'll click Computer, and I'll call this List View. And we want this to be a list. I have a dedicated lesson later on in the course to walk you through this entire screen as there's many different options here. But for now, I'll just click Finish. And now there's our list view. It builds for us a top navigation part, a body part, and a footer. We also have a dedicated lesson for layout parts later in the course too, when you're ready to really dig in and look at all the details. So at this point, I could determine what I should put on my list view. I think we should put the company name. So I'm going to orient these fields horizontally and their labels above like this. And that's traditionally what I have when I work with list views, horizontally oriented with labels on top. And I'll bring over the company name like that. And I'll put it so that the label is in the top nav. Actually, I don't want that in the top nav. Let me just move this over here for a second. And I'm going to go to layouts and I'm going to go to Part Setup. I'm going to add one more part here called a header. And this is where I'll put the actual labels. We'll leave the navigation for when we create buttons and labels for the actual overall module. So let me bring this field back over here, and we'll set it up just like this so that the field is in the body part and the label is in the header. And I'm using the arrow keys on the keyboard just to give it some more breathing room like that. Now I will, um, actually I want to do one more thing here. I'm going to move this up so that the header can be smaller. So I have to move the label up to the top of the header. Then I can use this line to drag the header up so that the height of the header is a little more like a list view. We don't need a huge header just for the label. Now that we've got that set up, I'll add a few more things here. I think we should bring in first. Last, I'm holding the command key to select like this. And how about State, email, and country. Let's bring all of that over. All right, now obviously it doesn't fit here, so let me reduce my view. I'm going to view and zoom out, which is command negative sign. And maybe one more too. It's okay to zoom out like this when you're working with a lot of fields that expand left to right as you add them to the layout. So I'll put my first name in, then I'll put a last name. And the last name, that doesn't need to be so wide. Let me zoom in one more, Command Plus, there we go. The state, much like we did earlier, we made the state small to make it appropriate for the data. I'll do that here too. There we go, that's the state. Email, I want enough room for the country, so I'll make the email a little smaller. I'm gonna make the last name quite a bit smaller. Even the company name can be smaller, but not too much smaller. Some of those company names are large. I'm going to drag all of these and move them all over as a collective. And then use the arrow keys to make fine adjustments. We'll straighten this out here in just a second. Click on the email, bring over the country, shorten that up a touch, country label. Now all these labels are all misaligned, so I'm just going to cut right through them here with my cursor so that all of these are selected. 
And then I'm going to go to Arrange, Align Bottom Edges. Now all the labels are lined up. The fields are also a little bit out of alignment. So here I'll cut these from starting at the bottom and cut into them this way. And then I'll say Arrange, Align Top Edges. But it's still a little close to this line, so I'm going to use the arrow key to bring them down just so I can see a little bit of white space here between the top of the field and the next body part. Now to keep this a tight list, I'm going to bring the body of this list so that the height is smaller. In fact, the body at the bottom, you can touch the bottom of the field if you so choose. You can use this to bring it all the way up, or I can give it just a little breathing room. I'm holding the command key as I move this, and that prevents my line from snapping. Now let me do one last straightening out of these fields. I'm going to hold the shift key while I select the state label as well as the state field and move them both over this way. Email I want a little wider, so I'm going to grab this middle line and make it wider. And then I'll grab this in the middle, move that over like that. And now back to browse mode. And by golly, we have a list view. All right. So let's recap what we learned. We were on our contact view. We imported data, so we learned how to import data using that screen. We learned to go to briandunning.com for some good sample data to get us started. I'll put a link below this video for the Brian Dunning website. Next, after we imported our data, we created a new layout. We went into layout mode first, created a new layout, and then created a computer list type layout after naming it list view. That brought us into a starting list view. Then we added a header part, so we'd have a good place for our labels, our header of the fields. And then we added the fields, which you had already seen in a previous lesson. We know how to add fields to a layout, except this time we made them oriented on the horizontal versus the vertical. And then we did most of our time just tweaking and straightening things out. We used some of the tools here under Arrange to do that, where we aligned bottom and top edges, depending on the situation. I may clean this up a little bit. But essentially, I'll post this, which is our contacts list view. To switch back and forth manually between the list view and the form view, you can just go to browse mode and just flip between contacts, list, and form view. In a future lesson, we'll learn how to make a button to go back and forth between the two. That concludes this lesson for list view. Thanks for joining us on this lesson. Feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel. We'll catch you on the next one.